Well, hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another bonus episode for the Weird of the Week. I, um, I'm, I'm feeling good about going with that name a bit more, and moving forward, I'm going to be having these a bit more consistent. I know as of recording this last week, this, this episode should be last week's, but I'm recording it a little bit delayed, um, as mentioned during the most recent episode of the podcast, there have been a few personal things that kind of pulled me away. Uh, but we're catching up. This week, I'm going to be recording two of them. Um, I'm not sure what the second topic is going to be for the second upload, but for this one, I'm going to be recording what I should have been recording prior. And that is the evidence of early man here in North America dating way, way, way further back than we had ever ever originally thought and this is super intriguing to me i have always been really into like ancient man how our ancestors kind of migrated throughout the world and understanding that sort of divide and progression of us spreading throughout the world i recently got into like learning about ancient homo sapien species but this one is is definitely intriguing i i definitely want to look into it more afterwards but i i want to read a quick article um it's from the guardian and uh it, it basically details everything that's going on with the case it's it's very brief i, I think it's still in some early stages of this stuff but uh, nonetheless uh it says new scientists oh new scientific research conducted by archaeologists have uncovered what they believe to be the oldest known human footprints in North America. Research done in the White Sands National Park in New Mexico discovers the ancient footprints, with researchers estimating the tracks are between 21,000 and 23,000 years old. Now, that was reported by Science.com, but again, I'm reading from The Guardian. Uh, If you do want to read the full article and the additional notes, I'm not going to you know, read word by word. Um, the link should be in the post description for you guys here on the Patreon. Uh, so it goes on to say that the prints were discovered in a layer of soil and that the uh, U.S. Geological Survey analyzed it by comparing the seeds that they uncovered and sort of dating those fossilized seeds to give them a more approximate age of where these footprints uh, or when these footprints were created, um, because the seeds were embedded along with them. And it actually goes on to say that the footprints, there are like dozens of them. I had originally only thought there were like two, uh, based off photos that I had saw, but there are a few good handful of them, and scientists believe that it's actually from a variety of people, primarily children and uh, teenagers, which is definitely interesting uh it makes you wonder what was going on uh, at that time that it was just them that we found but maybe we discovered more and it was like a family migrating through uh previously uh here in north america uh the earliest believed time uh that humans sort of migrated over was 11,000 to 13,000 years ago so we've pretty much added like 10,000 years onto the history of human existence on North America. Uh, I it, it to me that's fascinating um especially because it, like that's just that's just so crazy to think about that and and to be fair too, we don't even know if that's how far back it goes. Like it could go back further. We don't know. Uh this could be like a fluke thing. We this could just be some random family moving through that happened to get across. We genuinely do not know. We know so little about like early history of humans and our migration. I mean, we know we know a lot. We we definitely know a good portion of information, but this discovery alone shows that we still know, like we still have so much more to learn, uh, to per se, about our, you know place in the world our existence on earth and uh, like all these scientists like they're saying like this is a game changer uh that you know humans existing on north america on the more 
you know, Western hemisphere of the world uh, is, is massive, massive news. And uh, when I saw this, like, blowing up on, I think it was Twitter when I first saw it, uh, I was intrigued. I was like, what the heck is this? Uh, I was on my lunch break, and I was like, I need to see this. I need to check this out. I need to learn a bit more of what the heck's going on because, my God, that's this is interesting. Uh, I'm definitely intrigued to see where it goes further. Um, I don't think, like I said, they're in very early stages of the research. This story is you know, maybe a week old at the point of recording this, uh, so I doubt you know, there's any other major discoveries or, you know, groundbreaking evidence that is being discovered and researched. And I'm going to, you know, keep my ear to the ground, see what's going on with New Mexico. And if there's any other, you know, footprints that are discovered or artifacts that are discovered, uh, I don't know. I don't know the circumstances in which they were actually doing the research. Um, I don't know if they just came upon it or what have you, because none of the articles that I've found personally have actually detailed that. Um, but I'm just going to go by the fact that, you know, scientists found it, yada, yada, yada. And uh, moving forward, I'm interested to see how things go. And there you go. We have a weird story and we um, don't know our full history. I don't have more to say, and now I'm rambling. So I hope you guys did enjoy. I do apologize again for the delay in this episode and, you know, being consistent over on the Patreon. But again, uh, this is, you know, going to be a double week for everyone to enjoy. Not sure what the next episode will be, but it should be released fairly shortly within the same day that this is being uploaded. So more than likely it will fall on the 7th, I believe is the next Thursday coming up. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope to see you guys next time on the next weird of the week. And thank you so much for supporting the Patreon. I really do. Uh, I really do. Or oh my God, I really do mean a lot. It really does mean a lot to me. And uh, I, I want to say thank you guys for the ongoing support. All right. I hope you guys have a great day and I hope to see you guys next time. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another bonus episode for the Weird of the Week here on Patreon. We have an interesting story today. So, um, if you listened to the previous episode that was recorded a few days prior, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do for the topic of this one. I, I did have one story, but I'm going to hold off on it and save it for next week because it's short but it's really interesting and I kind of like it but this one this one just popped out out of nowhere uh yesterday uh when I was heading back from work I was on Twitter and I was like what is this why is this trending I need to click on it and I did and I'm very happy that I did because oh my goodness so if you are not following the news and you're not into true crime and the bizarre and everything like that, you might not know that there was a trending thing yesterday of the Zodiac Killer potentially being found. Now, the reason why I want to talk about it a bit more, too, is because the story itself has been kind of... It's been kind of muddied and it's kind of taken out of context as to how significant this is. Some people are kind of overhyping it in a lot of ways. Uh, but essentially, um, if you want to read a good article that really talks about it, I have a USA Today link uh, in the description for this post. But essentially what it was originally trending as is, you know, Zodiac Killers found uh, all this stuff. It's super, you know trendy it's super mainstream all this sort of stuff but the truth behind it is that the case for the zodiac killer is still very very much open by law enforcement and the theory so to speak that is being presented is being presented by a group of individuals known as the case breakers and the case breakers are a group of essentially independent researchers. They, they claim that they are compiled of, you know, 
law enforcement, uh, intelligence officers, such and such, you know, service workers, uh, dozens of them who have compiled research and done their own investigations. And they believe that they have named the man who is, you know, quote unquote, the, the killer, uh, Mr. Zodiac himself. Now, I'm not going to say the name because for reasons uh, I don't 100% believe uh, <laughs> that this is the case. And until there's actually some firm evidence, I don't want to slander someone's name. Uh, but I will say that the supposed killer that they proposed uh, is actually dead. He died in 2018. And uh, that is convenient in a lot of ways. But the researchers themselves say that they, you know, they went over physical forensic evidence uh, as well as recovered photographs and gathered information from, uh, you know, different sources in order to compile who they believe is the most likely suspect. Now, the theory itself, as I mentioned before, uh, the case is still open. Uh, the theory is not supported or endorsed in any such way by authorities, uh, even though, you know, it blew up on Twitter and everything like that. The San Francisco office from the FBI does confirm that the Zodiac Killer case does remain open uh, and has, you know, declined to provide additional information, but, you know, it's still an open case. No one really knows what's going on with it. Uh, now, the the thing that's kind of shady with this part is the group, kind of they're kind of all over the place they they think that this dude is connected to another killing somewhere else that's like predates the zodiac kills by like a few years uh but the san francisco you know law enforcement uh they also don't believe that the case breakers have good enough evidence to connect it to specifically uh kari joe bates who was a victim and the, like the it's it, the evidence that they provide is extremely circumstantial at best, and it's just not a whole lot to really connect this dude to this girl to then back to the zodiac to then to the other cases, and it's just a mess. It's like a big jargled mess, um, but it's an interesting story because you know the zodiac killer has been around since like the '60s, I think it was when this stuff was happening, and you know like he he claims to have killed like 30 people at that time, but I think it's only like, you know, seven or eight. It, it's a much smaller number. Uh, he has two survivors. He left all those cryptic notes and it's been decades. Like since any significant lead or headway has been made, I know every now and then though, you will hear some stories uh, about, you know, amateur code breakers or groups such as the, uh, the code breakers, uh, or actually, are they called code breakers? Case breakers. Um, that pop up. They pop up every few years. They pop up every now and then when, you know, they allegedly decipher the same code in a different way. They get a different message. That for they get a different name. And I think in the case breakers case, too, like, you have to, like, use this dude or this suspect's name in order to actually decipher the codes. But, like, it... To me, like it really does need to be, you know, looked into. It's interesting. It's very interesting to say the least. Uh, if this is the case, it's a little disappointing that the dude is already dead. But good, I guess that he's not out there. But as it remains today, you know, the case is still open. This is still an ongoing investigation, an ongoing mystery that has, you know, baffled everyone for. At this point, it's, what, uh, 60 years, give or take, almost, uh, by maybe a few years. And uh, we might never know. You know, we might never actually know who is responsible for the killings and who is actually to blame. Uh, but we'll see what comes of it. I will keep you guys up to date with, you know, if any updates comes about, uh, again, I will have the article link down below for you guys to check out the full thing. They go into a bit more of research and they, uh, you know, mention some fact checking stuff and other articles from like, I think last year about one of the ciphers being solved. 
Uh, if you do want to read it, it's a pretty good, it's a short read, but it's a good one. Um, and I would definitely recommend it. And like I said, I will keep you updated. I'm definitely not, you know, a true crime podcast in any sense. Uh, we, I don't think have really ever covered true crime. Um, it's to me, it's interesting in some cases, but at the same time, uh, I'm not surprised by it. You know, I'm not surprised by human cruelty in any way. Uh, so I kind of stick away from it because those aren't the stories that really intrigue me. Uh, and oftentimes I feel like it's a lot of the same. Uh, it's a lot of hyping up the killer in some senses. Uh, it's a little too gratuitous in some cases. And I don't know. I'm just weird with it. And I kind of like sticking to the stuff that's a bit more bizarre in nature um but yeah if you guys do are interested though and you want me to cover you know case updates stuff like that uh, i might you know be able to cover them a bit more here on weird of the week moving forward but that is up to you guys to decide uh and i will leave you know a poll or something for you guys if you really want to uh moving forward to figure out if that's something that you know the community might be interested in but aside from that that is all i have for this story it's a short one like i said it blew up on twitter and it was trending everywhere yesterday uh so it is very much fresh in the zeitgeist right now and we'll see how the story goes and if there's any updates i will update it here and let you guys know until then though i hope you guys did enjoy and i want to thank you all for your ongoing support here on the patreon and i hope to see you guys next week with another weird of the week update all right have a good one well, hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Weird of the Week, the little bonus series we have going on here in the Patreon. And, uh, yeah, so this is the episode coming out after the uh, Ball Ball, which is the Filipino you know, mythology episode that we had discussions on, I believe, the 21st. So if you're joining us later on, this is the corresponding episode, but otherwise you're just getting up to date with an extra little bonus series. So, um, there's not a whole lot new. Again, I'm, I normally record these things like immediately after, you know, recording the actual episode. So nothing really major has really popped up. However, uh, I did shift this one a little bit back to record it the day of release rather than the day I'm recording it, uh, because there's actually an extra little story, so to speak. Um, it's really quick because I don't have an article in front of me to really discuss it. It's just something that I looked over on the way home from work yesterday. And uh, that is a sort of continuation or update to a the story that we did uh, in the prior episode, the one covering uh, the Fort Mountain mystery, as well as some of the weird, you know, just coincidences and other mysteries uh, that just happen to be, you know, like six uh, degrees of separation from it. Uh, in particular, the Prince Manak story in which, you know, Scandinavians, Vikings and stuff came to uh, the United States, North America, far, far earlier than Columbus. They were theorizing that Prince Manak was here in like the 1100s or something. And, uh, Lo and behold, last night, there was an article. I forget where the article was from. I was seeing it on Twitter as like a news feed. But they have quote unquote like definitive proof now to state that Vikings were in fact in North America uh, hundreds of years before Christopher Columbus. Now, it was always like a theorized thing. It was always something that was kind of just assumed to be true. Because we were going off of like folk tales and stories from Viking tradition that, you know, date hundreds of years after when they allegedly got here. We just couldn't definitively give a date. We just had like a rough estimate. But they were doing research, I believe, up in Newfoundland in Canada and researching a settlement and establishment that had like a hundred or so Viking people, women, uh, men you know, and they dated it to what I believe was like 1065 or something, like really kind of specific, but they dated it based off of some trees in the area to, I guess, you know, 
carbon date or ring date. I don't know specifically how they did it, but they dated it based off of chopped down trees in the area and within the establishment itself. And it, it's interesting. It's it's pretty neat to, you know, keep because we had that story before with, you know, the whole footstep over on the West Coast and now over here on the east, we have, you know, the story up in Canada about, like, you know, the history of North America and the history of our world is still very much developing and constantly in flux and constantly being updated and revised. And I find that really interesting. And I just kind of wanted to touch base on it real quick here for you guys to enjoy. And if you want to look into it, definitely look into it. I personally skimmed over the articles for the most part. There's not a whole lot of information on there. But if you want to find it yourself, you know, just Google it. I'm sure it's trending somewhere right now because uh, it is pretty, you know, recent news at the time of this being released. Okie doke. So for today's little article topic that I brought, this is uh, the topic that got pushed from last week due to, you know, the whole Zodiac thing popping up. And uh, this is an article titled, Data shows U.S. counties with the most UFO reports. And it's from uh, the MSN. So I will be sharing the article link for you guys. And uh, it's, you know, one of those top 10-ish type lists. But I thought it was interesting because I always like this stuff. I personally like following, I think it's Lucida, the Lucida map. It's like a map that uh, people... I want to say it's lucida.com. I'll, I'll post a link uh, with this as well or like in a different post for you guys to enjoy. Uh, it's it's a map of like people putting down their own local paranormal stuff and you can like zoom in on it and like find local things. And this is kind of the same feel to me um, because it says uh, data collected by two UFO researchers has revealed that the U.S. Co- or the U.S. counties with the largest number of UFO sightings. Uh, the UFO phenomena has certainly been on the rise as of lately. You know, a lot of more attention has been on it thanks to, you know, the government having those recent uh, UFO report or UAP reports uh, with, you know, the Navy pilots as well as, you know, the whole disclosure hype, I think, back in, like, June uh, or July that, like, never really panned out. But, you know, it's been in the news a lot lately. It's been back in the, you know, the zeitgeist a bit more. It's always been there. It's just, you know, when the government starts talking about it, people get a bit more active, so to speak. But recently there was a poll from Gallup that figured out that like 41% or something of Americans believe that some form of UFO or alien nature is out there. Whether or not, you know, they didn't really go into super vivid detail of what they mean in the article. Uh, But I would assume that would mean, like, there could be aliens out there, we just don't know. Or people who are, like, firm, firm believers. I personally am in the camp of, I think, I'm pretty sure it's possible that they're out there in some form. Whether it's, you know, bacterial, animal, I don't care. I really don't care if we're the only intelligent life or not. Um, I just don't personally think that, you know were the only life and that's the only thing that i'm really concerned about um if we're like the only planet with life but i feel like they've had like microscopic bacterial type uh organisms before so i feel like we're fine but okay so i'm not sure when this uh like time frame that they're looking at um but i believe they've been compiling it for the past two decades so from the year 2000 to roughly 2020, I don't believe they've in, uh, they've included 2021 stuff or the full year of 2020. Again, I don't know where the cutoff is. I just know it's roughly within that time frame. Uh, but I'm going to be reading off the list. I'm going to be going from 10 to 1. And, you know, this is just a little quick thing. And if you guys hear any of your own counties uh, or local areas, feel free to let me know because I do not see any that are really that close to me. Aside from maybe a number one, but that's still pretty far away. Uh, okay, so at number 10, within these this past 20 years, we have uh, St. Louis City County, Missouri, with 328 sightings. That is roughly 106 sightings per 1,000 uh, residents. 
Number nine, we have 20 more at 348 at Boulder County, Colorado, with 107 sightings per 100,000 individuals. I'll actually have to be there soon because I have to visit my friend. Next, we have a little bit higher at 379 in Latimer County in Colorado again with 109 sightings per 100,000 people. Next, we have a leap of about 100 to 476 in Pinal County, Arizona with 110 sightings per 100,000 capita. At number six, we have... 511 from Atta County, Idaho, with 111 sightings per 100 capita. Then we have, okay, so the sightings kind of fluctuate from this point onwards because the, you know, the population shifts, so the per capita shifts. So a few of them are going to be lower. In case in point, uh, num- number five is 448, so down. <laughs> Actually, below even number seven. Uh, okay, so five is 448, which is Land County, Oregon. But the per capita is 120 sightings per 100,000. Then in number four, we have uh, Whatcom County in Washington with 339 sightings, but with a uh, sighting of 153 per capita. Then we get into the top three, and at number three, we have Mojave County in Arizona with a very large per capita leap of 194 per 100,000. And then there's another decent leap in the uh, per capita, and also now with the sightings, we're back going back up. Uh, 515 in uh, Yavapai County, Arizona again but with a per capita sighting of 225. And then finally, we get someone who is not over in the West Coast or in the Midwest. We have the Harry County in South Carolina, surprisingly. Although, I feel like South Carolina has a lot of sightings overall and stories to it, so I'm not not too surprised. Uh, But number one, we have Harry County, South Carolina, with a whopping... 844 sightings in the last 20 years and a per capita sighting of 254. Yeah. So the number one has the highest per capita rate and also the highest number of sightings, which makes sense in correspondence or in correlation. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, you know, I'm here up in Philly, up in uh, PA. So the closest one to me is number one, technically. Actually, I don't know if Missouri is close. No, Missouri is not closer to me. So I'm closest to South Carolina. Uh, I don't know whether or not, you know, if you heard any counties nearby you, uh, you know, if you're living in, you know, it's it's a lot of like the states that you would expect. You know, if you're living in Colorado, uh, you have two. If you're in Arizona, you have three of them. Um, and then like, you know, the mid, the Pacific Northeast or Northwest, uh, with Oregon and Washington, that sort of stuff. Uh, if you're in those general areas, I'm sure you're used to this sort of stuff. I'm sure you're used to the extra sightings and the extra reports. And uh, personally, I would love that. Oh, my God, I wish we had. There's, like, no... In PA, like, there's no, like, UFO-type town. I would love one of those, like, retro, like, deserty, just UFO-themed towns to be out here. It'd be so nice we have nothing we have like we have colonial stuff but like most the east coast does and that's not you know unique anymore i don't know i i'm a little bit bored with pa and i personally i want to travel and i want to go to some of these spots to research and do stuff with them uh but in the meantime i have to satisfy myself with these articles and i felt like this was a fun one to share with you guys again i will be posting the article link for you to check it out i do believe they go into more than the top 10 so perhaps you do see your county i didn't see anyone near me at all uh i just wanted to talk about the top 10 because i figured you know it's the most relevant it's you know the most prevalent aspect of it 
And uh, yeah, so that's what we have for today. We have UFO counties and Vikings settling in the U.S. And uh, lots of goodies. I hope everyone is enjoying the spooky season right now. Uh, It's at the point of this being released. It should be like the week before Halloween. But yeah, it's been good. I personally haven't felt like it's been too much of a spooky season so far. That might just be me. But, I don't know. It, it's something. Uh, I kind of like it. It's kind of warm out. It's interesting. <laughs> but we'll see how things are going. I mentioned this over on the episode that released this week as well. That the whole Fright Month stuff, I announced that into October. I probably should have done prep for it prior to that. But I'm extending it into November as well with the whole, you know, terror tuesday stuff i have a bunch of episodes that are scripted out and record ready to record and stuff like that which is a lot of research but for me i i feel like november kind of extends into that whole like spooky autumn theme and i like i love november a lot so i'll be doing that i'm also going to be doing some extra bonus stuff that i want to get done i just need to figure out the time to record it i know i keep saying i have like all these bonus things and, like, I've gotten better with the article stuff, and we're going to be doing the Fright Month stuff. But I just need to, like, dump stuff onto the Patreon, you know, to bolster things for you guys. And I will be getting better with that. There's going to be a monthly poll coming up soon this week as well for you guys to enjoy and vote upon for something coming up next month. And, yeah, so I don't have anything else, and I'm just kind of rambling. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, again, if you're listening to this on the patreon uh thank you so much for the support obviously but if you're new uh for whatever reason and you didn't get the you know the welcome message that you get when signing up there should be a rss feed and link for you to grab uh within that message if you have not gotten that and you can't find that link just feel free to give me a message and I'll email it to you or I'll message it to you wherever you reached out to me. Uh, and you can plug in that RSS feed to get all these, you know, bonus series episodes, the uh, Weird of the Week like today, or the Fright Month slash Terror Tuesday stuff, or whatever bonus audio gets uploaded. And you can plug that RSS feed into whatever podcast listening platform you want to. You can do it, you know, on a- uh, Apple, uh, Podcast, Spotify. You can pretty much plug it in anywhere. And you'll be able to see the uploads as they come and listen to them on the go as you like. Uh, But until then, I want to say thank you guys again for the support. The ongoing support has been amazing uh, for those who do subscribe to the Patreon. And it really does mean a lot that you guys enjoy this show enough to actually want to see it do better. Um, Until then, guys, I hope you had a good time for this Weird of the Week as well as the episode that was uploaded today. And I hope to see you guys next time. Remember, stay spooky.